I get him now, young Billy signal for another drink. A couple of years ago, he began again. This Greek, like Jim McConnell's Greek, Bob nodded. This savage got angry at some lawyer over around Bangor, kept insisting the lawyer cheated him, and he shot him. <laughs> what they do, young Billy waved to the waiter again. And they prosecuted, open and shut case. Any prosecutor, any prosecutor would love it. Their drinks arrived. Outside against the lobster sky, tired lobstermen started in with the day's haul. The weather cold, clean, sharp sea salt wind on the clear blue. Young Billy commented, he, Sabis, got declared insane. Young Billy's features took on a stern disapproval as he said, he didn't wound that first lawyer badly. That first lawyer, Bob was taken back. Young Billy looked hard at Bob. Yep, that first lawyer. Well, after about eight months in Augusta State Hospital, another lawyer gets Sabbath a pass. How he did it or why, don't ask me. He's out. He goes to see the lawyer who just loosed him back among us after nearly a year, and he shoots him too. Bob intentionally looked aghast, allowing young Billy to have his I must be appeased attention. So he continued, not frowned, not received within himself in the sulk of drinking, convinced Bob wasn't listening to his show, his obviously insightful description, he imagined. Well, our Jim Economo, second generation Greek from pool room to DA to private practice, good hearted Jim Economo wasn't going to have it said of him in the lime city he grew up in of the Cleveland Lobster Water Country that a countryman of his could have trouble and be alone, no sir, no sir Bob. Jim Economo, all Paul Economo has left except his girls, his daughters, young Billy stopped as if he had finished the summation. Yeah, his girls, Bob realized. Paul Economo's got girls, but he wouldn't think girls matter. Bob said no. Jim Economo stepped out, up out of shoe shining to walk with Protestants and eat the same lobster they do. Bob shook his head and said, Jim just couldn't resist trying to shove a little wise ass at whispering Protestants who would keep him stooped shining shoes his whole life if they could, if it wasn't for his immigrant father a wonder for his own hard, hard work in law school to give the Cleveland Lobster Water Country Protestants a message loud that we Greeks are together. Guess what, young Billy said. He decided to represent Savis. Worse, Bob waited. Young Billy went on. The first thing he did was to tell the Savis, his client, that he'll get him out of the state hospital. I can't believe this, Bob squirmed around in his chairs, lips pursed. Young Billy said, those of us who practice law pointed out to Jim Economo that Savis's aim was getting better, but you couldn't get him to listen. Yeah. <laughs> Savis was his client, and as in Parton, unable to speak good English. And nobody was going to keep a Jimmy Economo client locked up awaiting proceedings. How, asked Bob, shaking his head, how under any stretch of anybody's imagination did Savis become bailable? Who knows, young Billy mused and grinned as if privately enjoying lawyer ability. That's what lawyers are around for, to do the impossible. Young Billy sucked his glass, and the smooth Huchino was beginning to make him look preserved. I guess when he got to the point where psychiatrists thought him well enough to issue a pass so he could confer with the second lawyer about shooting and wounding the first lawyer, I guess that somehow, technically, even though he shot his second lawyer too and was now answerable for two shootings, I guess somehow being able to get a pass got him to some weird status where Jim McConnell could get him out on bail if he could post it. Humanity backfired on Jim Buck commented. Young Billy looked at Bob waiting, trying to be compassionate, Bob finished, to raise another immigrant to the treatment a white Protestant would expect, got Jim Economo shot. They could see lobstermen far away now toward their beaches, tired, the death of the day, ready to be sorted on rock piers, wafts that looked rickety in tar gravel, and the lobster gone out of the Penobscot forever. Bob said, think, young Billy, all Jim Economo's hard, hard work, everything went out the bullet holes in him. No, he's recovering, young Billy stated. <laughs> they both would leave the Lime City Hotel dining room now, and outside on the sidewalk pond, 
young Billy Fast, holding the hotel door open for them, Buck Buse, somehow, I don't think anybody could be the same after somebody shot you. Walking by himself up Main Street past Paul Economo's full power shoeshine business, <coughs> Buck tried to fantasize his father to see Big Billy, smiling Billy, standing, talking there, right there with Paul Economo. Instead, Jimmy Economo filled his mind. He could hear the shots. The first bullet, Jim's arms become like snap twigs that muscle ripple snapping shines on shoes. And bullet two took his body's generated strength to lift him above it all. Shot three canned his ambition in his wounds. And after shot four, all his heart lust out the silk of him. The fifth bullet made certain that he must always admit a companion to his privacy.